Roto Grinders. We are back for preseason DFS action once again in 2023. My name is Chris Gimino and I'm joined by Kyle Murray. We are NFL analysts here at Roto Grinders and we have spent way too much time recently digging in to the stats and information surrounding the preseason DFS slate for Friday. Kyle, welcome to the show. Are you absolutely pumped and stoked to talk about wide receivers 11s and 12s throughout the week? <laughs> Believe it or not, I am. Uh, it's actually been fun. It's been a little bit of a, a whirlwind with all the news and all the information to digest. But uh, yeah, it's it's been fun. You know, we had a pretty successful Hall of Fame game, and there's a slate tonight that uh, hopefully everyone's checking out the content there, and hopefully we can keep it rolling with these uh, this first bigger slate of the year. Yeah, once again, six game slate for Friday. Uh, we are going to go through the top plays in this podcast and review who we think. Could have the most opportunity. That's what we are focused on in preseason DFS is locating the opportunity. Usually the fantasy points will follow. If you would like to find the opportunity with us all season long, I remind you, NFL is already here and we're more than ready than ever with our team of experts and tools at RG Premium. Let us handle the legwork so that you can do less work and win more this NFL season. Get access to everything we have to offer, including special discounts only available to those Without an RG subscription, you can get a full season subscription for $50 off at a limited time only, price of $375. Get there now. Sign up. Get the preseason DFS content. Get the NFL season contest. I'm going to tease something, Kyle. I promise you big stuff is on the way at RG Premium. Coming soon. Anyway, let's talk quarterbacks. Friday slate, Skylar Thompson. You did the Dolphins in our research leading up to the show. Tell me about what's going on with Skylar Thompson. Why do you like him for this slate? Yeah, so we haven't heard any official news from Miami yet um, in, in this game with both teams kind of doing their joint practices down there in Miami with uh, Atlanta and Miami. Both coaches decided to kind of hold off on announcing anything too firm on, on the starters. My gut tells me that we're probably not going to see a whole lot of the Miami starters. Obviously, with all of Tua's uh, injury history, we've seen a couple of other major players on this uh, offensive front get banged up as well with some position players here. So I, I think it could be a, a pretty even split between Mike White and Skylar Thompson here. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Skylar Thompson plays a bit more uh, than, than a full half, honestly, just with the way that they're going about the season. I'm assuming Mike White is going to be their insurance policy on Tua. They don't really need to risk injuring him as well we saw Skyler Thompson last year he, he started a playoff game he threw about 55 passes in a playoff game so he has experience here but he also has experience in the preseason as well last year he threw for 450 yards five touchdowns and no interceptions in his preseason play about 150 yards per game there so we've seen him do it and do it pretty well in the preseason already uh, and I think he's going to have a chance to play at least uh, a quarter and a half maybe even more than a full half here for Thompson, we haven't really seen the rushing upside in the regular season from him last year or even in the preseason uh, last year, but we saw it in college and we saw a little bit of his mobility, uh, you know, working outside of the pocket. So I think Skylar Thompson is kind of a, a perfect fit for preseason. He has some mobility. The opportunity is clearly there as long as the news kind of falls the way I'm expecting to with Tua either being extremely limited to maybe a couple of drives, but I would honestly be surprised if they roll him out there at all. So uh, with that being said, Thompson has the opportunity. He has some decent weapons as well, uh, and then he has, uh, I, I think, a good skill set for, for preseason here. Yeah, and you see what Mike White can do too. So if you want to take the flip side of that and have, in those in the big mega field tournament, by all means, like he could play a half as well. But I think Thompson, I would agree – going to be play, playing in the scrubbier portion of this game, has the rushing skill set, and seems to be someone that we should be keeping our eye on for this upcoming Friday slate. Now, the Detroit Lions also had joint practices this week, and that means that we're probably not going to see much or any of Jared Goff per the way Dan Campbell is talking. So we've got Nate Sudfeld coming into the mix. Now, Kyle, did you look at the situation at all? What, what the heck is going on here? They signed Teddy Bridgewater – like, are, are we are we down to two quarterbacks here? Yeah, so Teddy Bridgewater was signed two days ago from the time of us recording here, which is Thursday afternoon. But they said that he's not going to practice until after the preseason game. So Teddy Bridgewater is on the team, but he's out of the picture here. Hendon Hooker, they've said it a million times, red shirt season for him. He's, he's not going to play at all this year and definitely not in the preseason. So um, as long as things go according to plan and Goff is in fact out, it's going to be down to two players here with Nate Sudfeld and Adrian Martinez, who are both 
pretty much on the outs in terms of the roster uh, with the addition of Teddy Bridgewater. They'll keep one of these guys around, I would assume, for the first you know half of the season, depending on the injury status of Hendon Hooker, just because of this new third quarterback rule. So these two are essentially, in my eyes, competing for the, I guess, the right to stay on the roster on game days as the emergency quarterback with that new rule, which is pretty important for preseason. Uh, it kind of allows guys to have a little bit more of extra competition for that role and, and potentially give a team a reason to hold on to these guys a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, so it, it sounds to me like it should be a, at least a two quarterback job here in week one, as long as Jared Goff does indeed sit like we're expecting. Yeah, this is purely motivated by playing time here. You know, Sudfeld probably has the leg up in this competition. I don't know if that means he has the leg up in playing time, but if Martinez is a lame duck, so to speak, that could yield some upside for him. Of course, he's not really a running quarterback yet. You know, 246 career preseason pass attempts and just 13 rush attempts. Uh, he, he's simply not very good. Both these guys have earned the right to be playing for this spot and having Teddy Bridgewater sign. They didn't play very well so far in camp. And, you know, this is a situation where it's purely about they're going to be on the field a lot not necessarily players that we absolutely love. Speaking of players we don't absolutely love, maybe you know what a Tommy DeVito is, Kyle. Maybe you don't. But he and Tyrod Taylor look like they could be splitting the game here for the Giants. How are you reading this situation? You know, Tyrod Taylor's old, a sin. Daniel Jones not very likely to play because of the joint practices. Uh, can we rely on this playing time here for these Giants? And are they options here in this preseason slate? Yeah, definitely in play here. Um, you know, you, you actually have a few teams that aren't really narrowed down to, in terms of playing time to two quarterbacks. So this is a fairly rare situation. I know a couple teams that we've talked about already are in that sort of boat. Um, but, you know, we're going to talk about or probably not talk about teams who aren't in that boat where they have three. And there's even a team out there that might have four quarterbacks that could potentially vie for some snaps this week. So two quarterbacks here with it sounding like Jones is going to sit and Tyrod's going to start. You know, it sounds to me like you know, the Giants, they kind of know what they have with Taylor. So maybe it's a spot where we even see DeVito play a bit more than a full half. Um, and, and again, like Tyrod Taylor, again, sort of an insurance policy where they don't necessarily – need to have him compete for the job or you know, may, or fight for the number one. He's sort of just sitting calmly at that number two spot in case Daniel Jones were to suffer an injury. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see DeVito play a bit more. Um, Tommy DeVito, it's a very New York name, no surprise. He's coming from a New York college there in Syracuse where he was effective at times. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to expect a ton of skill from Tommy DeVito, but again, he should have opportunity, which we've talked about a couple times already, and that's very important in preseason. Did play one season at Illinois last year yeah. after those uh, seasons of limited action at Syracuse, 15 and four touchdown to interception ratio, sneaky scramble capability that was not really reflected in the college numbers, but overall not really like a pure runner of any stretch of the imagination uh, like a Daniel Jones and like Tyrod Taylor at least used to be. But yeah, again, uh, I think we can feel pretty safe that DeVito is going to play a bunch and Tyrod could play up to a half here. So if you wanted to take a chance in either one of those guys in the lineups, Definitely towards the top end of the heap here. Now, now we're done with the guys who are going to play a half, or at least are projecting for a half. Here's a guy we don't exactly know if he can play a half, but is looking pretty good. Clayton Toon, talk about him. Yeah, a lot of hype for Clayton Toon, not only from from myself, but from Arizona beat writers and some of the Arizona teammates. Um, you know, with Kyler Murray expected to be out for at least the first month of the season, Colt McCoy seemingly had the leg up to be the week one starter, but it seems like that gap is closing with how Toon has been playing in training camp. This is a guy who put up tons of numbers in college at Houston. He was third in uh, that school's passing yards, which is a pretty impressive feat considering Case Keenum is number one in NCAA all-time passing yards, and he's first there at Houston. So just for context, it is about a 7,000-yard difference, which is quite crazy. But, you know, Toon was more than capable uh, in terms of passing there at Houston. He's going to have some decent weapons here, depending on who we sort of, sort of see uh, suit up for the Cardinals. Um, but this is definitely going to be a tournament play, a GPP play, just because I kind of alluded to there potentially being four active quarterbacks. There are four quarterbacks on the roster here who could potentially play. We haven't heard anything from Gannon. He is essentially going completely, you know, cards to, to the vest here, not giving up any sort of information other than Colt McCoy will start here. Um, again, Colt McCoy, you're not really evaluating him, I, I guess. You're maybe giving him the right to compete if there is a uh, competition for the quarterback one role here, but you don't necessarily need to roll him out there and evaluate him. So maybe he only plays 
three or four series. Maybe he plays a quarter because there's more of a competition. Or, you know, maybe the competition just gets pushed back to week two or week three of the preseason, and we don't really see much at all from these guys here in week one, and Jeff Driscoll and David Blau get more involved. So this is definitely a sort of sketchy situation in terms of strongly projecting it. But if Clayton Toon does play a full half where they give him this, this uh, I guess, the stage to really make a name for himself and compete for that QB1 spot, I think he definitely has upside here. So he's definitely going to be a tournament play that I'm circling for sure. Yeah, there's a couple of other guys who could be in this category of not going to play the full half, can't project them for a full half. Pretty good, pretty decent preseason quarterbacks that could get the job done. We're not going to list them all out now, but just know if you come over to check out lineup HQ or Rotor Grinders, we'll have some numbers in there that'll suggest who those guys might be. The running back position, we just got some news today, Kyle, that Justin Jackson retiring from pro football. Uh, some injuries on the Detroit Lions, Gibbs and Montgomery weren't previously expected to play a lot. That is making it look awfully good for Muhammad Ibrahim. Uh, just absolute workhorse in college. Let's talk about this guy. Uh, he's the top running back for now, right? Just based on the situation. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a real chance that there's two players in the backfield that are getting significant amount of touches. You know, they have obviously Gibbs and Montgomery who they have all the reason to not play here, you know, preserve the health, all the reasons to not play a key running back for a team. Craig Reynolds, he's banged up as well. Doesn't sound like he's going to have a, a chance to play here or if he does be extremely limited. And then you have the two new signings, Divino Zigbo, who was signed yesterday. Uh, so that'd be Wednesday, two days before the game. And then Benny Snell signed today, the day before the game. So, how quickly can they get a running back uh, sort of thrown into this into speed here and into the game plan? I would assume not that quickly. And it's not like Muhammad Ibrahim is a guy that they're planning on having a massive role here. He could very easily not make the team or maybe even be the RB4 come uh, week one here. So, you know, they're not necessarily saying, okay, we need to preserve his house. So there's a real chance that he gets a lot of work here. And honestly, same goes for Jamar Jefferson, who we saw have a couple of solid preseason showings last year. So, um, Ibrahim, though, has to be the top running back of the slate, I think, with just the way that the situations are shaking out currently. Boy, Dan Campbell really has a type here. They're, they're, Benny Snell, Divine yeah. Arvigbo, and Ibrahim all going to be available in this game. Jamar Jefferson isn't exactly like the most uh, fleet of foot out there as well. Just just some real plotters coming in the mix here. Although Ibrahim, you know, 70th percentile BMI, uh, 320 carries last year, just – really could be someone that they try to get through this game, plowing him up the middle or, you know, you know just really giving him a bunch of touches. Uh, not necessarily going to be incredibly sexy touches in my estimation, but in preseason, all we got to do is get in the end zone once. And I think he's got a pretty good chance to do that if he plays a lot. Some guys that did really well last week in the Hall of Fame game are once again going to be in a good spot here. Demetric Felton, John Kelly Jr. Can you talk about the situation with the Browns? Yeah, so Browns are going to roll out their starters, but it sounds like not, nothing more than a couple of drives here. Deshaun Watson was actually the one to make the announcement that he's going to start but not play a whole lot. Uh, and I would be surprised if any any more than two or three drives is played by these starters, especially for Nick Chubb, who by all accounts, it sounds like he's going to have to carry a ton of, uh, ton of the work here for this Cleveland team in the regular season with no Kareem Hunt this season. Jerome Ford, he's week to week with a hamstring injury, so it sounds like he's not going to be able to play and they actually got rid of one of their running backs that they had on their roster for the Hall of Fame game, Nate McCrary. So now they're down to potentially three running backs for the majority of the game outside of Nick Chubb, who's likely only going to play for the first couple of drives. And we saw what Felton could do uh, as a pass catcher and, you know, on the outside as a runner. John Kelly had a very solid game as well. He caught four or five passes, one for a touchdown, uh, while also being heavily involved as a runner. Hassan Hall actually uh, returned kicks for this team, which isn't really expected to be something that kind of carries over to the regular season, but it gives him, you know, more chances for touches here. And, you know, we didn't really see him as a runner too much last week, but th maybe that changes here. But in terms of projecting these guys, Felton and Kelly, you have to feel good about. Again, it seems like it's going to be a three, maybe even, may maybe even just really Felton and Kelly carrying a lot of the work here for the running backs after Nick Chubb's done, which I do expect to be very early in the game. And we saw both these guys be capable as pass catchers, which only raises their PPR floors as well. You got the sense last week because of how much they were involving the running backs in the passing game that they really were evaluating that position for the regular season, trying to figure out who can spell uh, Nick Chubb and to a lesser extent run forward on third down uh, and during the regular season. So Felton certainly is someone who's trying to prove that he can do, uh, you know, 
more than just receiving out there. He scored as a rusher last week. And Kelly, of course, you know, every preseason seems to look pretty good. So those are both going to be really, really intriguing options for the slate. Uh, Miami Dolphins, once again, coming up on our radar here with uh, maybe you can pronounce, pronounce the name better than I can. Devin, Devin Ashane. I, you have to f- forgive me. I'm not real familiar with the guy. Tell me, tell, tell the people about, the, about this guy. He's been really hyped up. Yeah, I believe it's a Shane as well. Uh, a lot of hype. Like it's really hard to find a guy who was, you know, not necessarily a, a superstar in college or, you know, even a guy who's been in the NFL before that is getting as much hype as a Shane right now. It's, it's a tremendous amount of hype, which I tend to feel a little bit uneasy about in preseason. You know, we saw it last week in the Hall of Fame game with Jason Brownlee getting all the hype and you know, not necessarily carrying over here. In this situation, I would like to get some more information on. Jeff Wilson left practice yesterday on Wednesday. We know his injury history. I would be surprised if he comes back from an injury in practice and plays in a preseason game. Raheem Mostert has been practicing in a limited fashion without um, without any contact. He's been wearing a non-contact jersey over a several amount of practices and has gotten some veteran rest days as well. Another guy, we know his injury history. I would be fairly surprised if he plays much, if at all, here. So that would lead us, if that ends, uh, ends up coming into fruition, that would leave us with four running backs here, which still there's better situations in terms of projecting opportunity. Um, and I, I do think a Shane's going to be a guy who potentially gets some ownership here. But if he's a low-owned guy who ends up going a little bit under the radar, I expect a, a lot of highly efficient and explosive plays to be ran for a Shane. We've seen it a couple times in clips on social media with them running this screen pass that you know they have all the blockers in the world in front of him. Yesterday they ended on a 25 or 30 yard touchdown pass from Skylar Thompson to a Shane. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of buzz around this guy. He's got a lot of talent for three two forty time, which is just incredible for a running back. And, and again, I think he's a, a, an explosive type player who really, I don't think he'll need a ton of playing time to pay off if he's able to capitalize on some of these explosive plays. Um, and then after that, you have a couple of guys who we know, right? Salvin Ahmed and, and Miles Gaskin. So if they're looking to evaluate a Shane here, this could be a good opportunity to do so. Um, but again, they do have other guys behind him if they want to preserve his health or maybe not get him banged up. Maybe they know what they have with him. There's been some talk that it could be a three-headed monster here in Miami uh, in the regular season. And now the talk has kind of transitioned to, okay, are they out of the Dalvin Cook running now because of how well Shane has been playing in the regular season. So it's sort of one of those things where I would like to get more information on to feel very confident in. But as of now, I think it makes for a really strong tournament play. Just going to fire through a couple of other spots here real quick that I researched in Pittsburgh. Uh, it does look like we're going to see all the quarterbacks there, but the running back position, I don't know if we're going to see quite as much Najee Harris, Jalen Warren at the top or the, a guy they signed uh, late into the offseason, Greg Bell, at the back end, that's going to leave, you know, with John Lovett, who, who did not practice on the ninth, uh, which was the last practice before the game, really just a couple of guys outside of that who could see touches, Anthony McFarlane, and Darius Hagens. McFarlane is the guy that they have talked up as someone who's really trying to earn that third spot on the roster. Obviously, they don't really have much competition for him at this point, so it's all but a done deal in my mind. But I do think that Mike Tomlin is the kind of person who is going to send out the guys in the preseason games and give that, make them prove it, make him show what he's shown in the practice field under the lights. And I think that that's what's going to happen here for McFarland. And he's going to be someone who should get some decent opportunities, especially since he's capable as a pass receiver. Also want to talk about the New York Giants situation. They are also going to be relatively thin for the position with Barkley and Breida solidified at the top of that depth chart and having joint practices this week. That's going to leave Eric Gray and Jay Sean Corbin as guys who could get some touches here in this game. It really depends if, you know, James Robinson and Matt Breida, you know, they're lurking around, they could steal some snaps. But I do feel pretty confident that we're going to see those other two guys uh, towards the top of the snap counts when we get to look at the snaps after the game. Gray's, you know, profiling as a 24th out of 44 athleticism per player profiler, not like the most athletic guy, but did rush for 1,300 yards and 11 touchdowns at Oklahoma in 2022. Uh, Corbin is a guy who got it done last year in the preseason with two touchdowns on 73 yards rushing. So again, opportunity-based selections there for the most part in Gray and Corbin, but they could be on the field quite a bit. I, one more, why don't you talk about the situation in Denver with, uh, with because this could be another spot where there's not too many guys lurking around and you got a couple of guys who could be in for consolidated reps. 
Yeah, so we know Javante Williams is not going to play in week one. Uh, apparently, they're going to try to get him some playing time in the preseason, but that's not coming here in week one. Um, the starters are going to play to to the extent we're not really sure. I would be fairly surprised if it was any more than three or four series. And with that, you know, kind of bringing Samaj P. Ryan off the field as well. After that, you're only left with three running backs. Tony Jones, who has experience in the Sean Payton offense in New Orleans. Tyler Beatty, who's kind of sort of taken over the potential front running spot for this RB3 role. And then Julio McLaughlin, who actually leads uh, the NCAA in rushing yards, which is, a again, a pretty important uh, stat to kind of hold over someone's head, right? So from opportunity standpoint, Beatty and Jones, it sounds like they're going to get the first crack to kind of show why they should be the number three running back on this team. Uh, in terms of finding the dif- difference between them, Beatty's more of a elusive running back. Jones a bit more of a bruiser there. Um, but again, with with Beatty sort of being the guy that, that a lot of the beat reporters have given the edge to in this role, I guess I would give him the slight edge, but it's it's a very slight one. But again, this could be a, a three running back room here with P. Ryan being done fairly early on in the game. So that makes uh, Jones, Beatty, and McLaughlin all in play. God, we already so many names at the running back position. We didn't even mention Goodson uh, in Green Bay, Sean Tucker in Tampa Bay, Chase Brown, Cincinnati. You just mentioned McLaughlin and some of those Dolphins guys. I mean, there's really, you know, there's really quite a few options here. I expect the ownership to get spread out for the most part, pending any other uh, locations getting particularly hot on one play or another out there in the content space. Okay, let's talk about the wide receivers. Uh, let's talk out once again out in uh, Miami. Uh, one of the more consolidated spots, and you've got Eric Uzenkanma pretty high here. Talk about him. Yeah, again, like you mentioned, pretty consolidated, but I think mostly it's due to to injuries, right? You have a guy in Braylon Sanders who was struggling at times in camp, but was one of the guys competing for a roster spot. Um, he got hurt on the eighth. Looks like it could be a pretty serious injury, so I'd, I'm I'm essentially counting him out for this one. Jalen Waddle got banged up. He fell pretty hard. Uh, he, he did walk off under his own power, so hopefully he's okay for regular season stuff. But in terms of preseason, I would be extremely surprised if they roll him out after getting injured. Um, and then Tyreek Hill, again, we know the soft tissue injury set that he's had pretty much every year, but specifically last year as well. So a lot of these guys I'm just not expecting to play, and if they do, I, I think it'd be extremely limited. And Azukama is a guy who they've been sort of talking about as a – potential candidate for the wide receiver four job. He's an, an outside receiver, 6'2", big body guy, has a pretty solid catch radius. So I think he's a guy who is a little bit different than some of these other guys on the roster, guys like Freddie Swain, River Crawcraft. These are guys, these are inside slot type guys. So Ezukama could potentially find himself in a spot where he can double dip on some of these uh units here just because of the fact that he's one of the outside receivers left um and many of these guys are going to be sort of slot guys so uh, azukanma i think has a nice little mix of opportunity as well as ability and and then in terms of the quarterbacks that he's going to be playing with more experienced guys than you're going to find uh kind of down the rest of the slate always hard to like wide receivers in preseason there's lots of bodies on these rosters you know it's always quite volatile so keep this in mind with all these selections is that there's not a whole lot that separates any of these guys. And, and, and using Khan is probably one of the guys that separates himself the most. Another guy that looks pretty good is Michael Wilson in Arizona, uh, getting all kinds of hype in camp. I'm thinking he's probably going to get a pretty good chance here too. Yeah. Michael Wilson, third round pick. He's actually been running with the starters when Hollywood has been out, which has been a lot this off season. He's been limited with an injury for the majority of camp so far. He did return to practice a couple of days ago, but obviously has remained limited. Um, so I'd be pretty surprised if Hollywood Brown plays here. And with that being the case, Michael Wilson is again, another guy who could potentially sort of double dip on the units that he's able to play with here in the preseason because he's, but got a good chance to be the number the number four wide receiver. Uh, so he could be potentially playing with a guy like Clayton Tune in that second team offense, which he's been doing a ton of in the uh, in training camp. But also he's got a chance to be bumped up to this first team with Colt McCoy in the preseason if Hollywood Brown is in fact out. And again, I like the talent here with Michael Wilson. There's been a lot of hype around him in terms of what he's been able to bring to the team. And he's actually been sort of forcing guys down the depth chart throughout the entirety of training camp. So he's continue to play well, and now he has a chance to show that uh, in, in a real game here. Guy on the Detroit Lions who messed up, gambled on sports, Jamison Williams is going to miss a bunch of games in the regular season. 
rumor on the street earlier this preseason was that the fact that he's going to be missing those games is probably going to cause him to get even more run in the preseason than he would have normally had here. I don't know if that's what's going to be the case here on Friday, but certainly the Lions are probably going to be sitting the majority of their top players. Is that going to create an opportunity for Jamison Williams? It Yeah, it absolutely will. Um, and Jameson Williams is a guy who, when he does return from suspension, he should be good enough to step right into that wide receiver two role. But he's extremely inexperienced. He barely played last year, recovering from that ACL injury. And there's been some talks about, about him just really underperforming uh, or showing that inexperience in training camp. So they have a lot of reason to run him out there, get him some real game reps. You never want to plan for it, but if he does happen to get banged up or, or shaken up he has the six weeks to recover um but again in terms of the opportunity there should be plenty of it here with the guys being out uh on this team and we know that he has the talent as he was a top draft pick here for the lions um and in terms of opportunity being there uh, we can definitely count that as a a, a very strong positive for jameson williams here going to fire through a couple of other guys here who once again not a lot separates things in preseason so these are Either situations like Jameson Williams, where we've got talented players coming back who didn't get the chance last year, or some concentrated snap opportunities on thinner depth charts. So Calvin Austin Jr., lead off there, just like Jameson Williams, wasn't able to play in the 2022 season, uh, did not even get to play in the preseason last year. Uh, this guy runs an electrifying 4 3 2 40, someone they've been using jet sweeps in camp, and this guy's been getting plenty of hype here in training camp. I don't expect him to be someone who gets the absolute most playing time of anybody on the slate, but I do think that he's the type of person who will get enough opportunities to get it done on efficiency. And he's, you know, again, not at the tippy top of the opportunity list, but someone who could absolutely house one or at least get enough catches and yardage to make it worthwhile on a preseason slate where you probably don't need a whole ton from the wide receiver position to keep it viable uh, on the giants. Colin Johnson, uh, Bryce Ford, Wheaton are two guys I want to single out as players who are going to be on one of the thinnest depth charts. There could be as few as eight players at the wide receiver position available for the Giants if they rest some of their top guys. Um, you know, he's the number one uh, ranked athletic scorer when I talk about Bryce Ford Wheaton for the 2023 class per playerprofile.com. 6'4", 221, big body guy, of course. That kind of athleticism is liable to get you compared to someone like Kevin White, also a very athletic, complete bust in the – NFL, so there's no guarantees that this guy's any good at actual football, but he is someone who should get a lot of playing time in this game. And the same goes for Colin Johnson, who's done it in the preseason before. Similar build, 6'2", 222, uh, 7 for 82 in one game last year, 3 for 41 in another. Uh, these guys could definitely get it done on volume. Uh, one last volume situation at the wide receiver position to mention. Uh, Tampa Bay is going to have eight guys possibly available if they sit those top guys or at least limit their snaps to some degree. Uh, Trey Palmer and Rakim Jarrett are two players uh, on the youth, more youthful side of thing that could be out there for a bunch of snaps compared to other players on the slate. Nothing particularly special to say there other than the opportunity could be there. Jarrett's been getting plenty of hype from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat reporters. Um, you've got a couple of, to rattle off yourself here as far as quick hitters, right? Yeah, just a couple of quick guys. Uh, you know, Cedric Tillman, he had a couple of nice catches there in the Hall of Fame game. And, you know, with some of these starters being expected to play a little bit more, you might get a little bit uh, stronger quarterback play as well with Watson and Dobbs. I'm not expecting a ton of playing time, but this is, again, a guy who is in a pretty intense uh, position battle right now for that wide receiver four role. It does sound like he's the front runner, um, but, you know, I do like him again here this this week here. Um, and then two Denver guys, Marvin Mims and Brandon Johnson, Again, starters are going to play here in Denver, but I would be pretty surprised if it's an overwhelming amount. So that leaves us with guys like Judy and Sutton, probably not seeing a ton of time. And then uh, Marcus Callaway also potentially being limited here. Marvin Mims and Brandon Johnson are two guys that have been uh, noted a ton in training camp as guys who are in the the mix to be rotated in as the fourth receiver in the regular season. I think potentially this could be a spot for them to showcase uh, sort of why they should be in the mix there. Uh, last two names for me are, are Washington guys. In, in terms of competent quarterback play uh, in the preseason it's you know it's a little bit far and few, few in between there but with Sam Howell Jacoby Brissett and Jake Fromm I feel like that's a pretty solid uh, trio of quarterbacks there Dammy Brown has been getting a lot of hype 
as potentially a guy who's competing for the uh, number four wide receiver role here. She had a strong connection with Sam Howell in the in the preseason as well in training camp. And then uh, Mitchell Tinsley also competing for a roster spot here. He could potentially see some playing time. There's not a ton of guys being limited uh, playing time wise for Washington here. So that, that leaves us with a lot of names in the receiver group. So not a ton to be uh, too enthralled with, but those are two names that did uh, catch my eye. Could continue to go on at the wide receiver position. Only so much time to talk about guys. So come over to rotoranders.com and check out the projections on Friday. And we, you know, we'll probably have a couple of others up our sleeve to disperse for your tournament needs. Now, at the tight end position, not a fun position ever to talk about in preseason, Kyle. Uh, straight, you know, surprise, surprise, it's preseason and Tanner Hudson's name's coming up again. I'm not saying this is as outstanding as a play as it's been in the past for you. Tanner Hudson, but I just wanted to point out he's back. Not not too much going on in Cincinnati depth chart. Yeah, uh, I mean, you kind of alluded to it. The, the tight end position can be weak at times here, and Tanner Hudson's been a preseason uh, darling for us uh, in, in years past, and I think that with a couple of names here that are a little bit banged up or have been injury prone in the past, we could easily see him you know, find his time on the field. Yeah, Let's go to the Green Bay Packers situation. Now, everyone's going to be talking about Luke Musgrave getting all kinds of hype. Don't know if he's a starter enough to be considered part of the starting group that we'll check out after a couple of series. Not really expecting him to be out there for like a full, full run. A guy I think that could see a little bit more time than him is Tucker Craft, a guy coming out of South Dakota State. Are you even aware of who this is, Kyle? I mean, this is what we're talking about in preseason. We're getting deep. I mean, if it weren't for our research here, I probably would not be too aware but he was a third round pick so maybe i uh i should have been more aware but again a very small school guy south dakota state um and in terms of the the skill set here um not too aware but yeah with it being a third round pick that, that sort of did catch my eye here number six athleticism score at the position for the class incoming on player profiler was productive out there as a receiver uh for for south dakota state and again there could you know not too many bodies here deguara was question you know could be considered questionable with a calf. And like I said, with Musgrave could be leaving early with the starters. So there could be some opportunities here for Kraft. Not something to fall absolutely in love with though. I will admit that. Uh, the Pittsburgh situation's a little thinner. Rodney Williams and Darnell Washington. Have you seen Darnell Washington? He looks like a guard running out there. I mean, played for Georgia, buried by Brock Bowers. I mean, are, are you aware of the situation going on in Pittsburgh here? Yeah. I mean, in terms of the, the skill set that, that Washington has, I saw it plenty of times last year even though he was being overshadowed by Brock Bowers at Georgia this guy is just a complete athletic freak I saw him hurdle somebody uh completely over a, a, a guy stood straight up and I and I just could not wrap my head around that sort of athleticism um so that's definitely an interesting talent to to have an eye on here yeah six six four and runs a four six sorry, <laughs> six seven and runs a four six forty I mean just absolute freak of nature and then you know he makes Hot, hot Rod Williams, who is also looking like he's going to get some opportunities here for the Pittsburgh Steelers in this game. Pretty good player from an athletic standpoint as well. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to say that I think Darnell Washington's got the edge over here because I think it all comes down to playing time and they should both get pretty similar playing time. But, I mean, two pretty good options there in the Steelers if you're looking for a tight end. I'm just going to throw in here James Mitchell of the Lions is on a fairly thin depth chart if Laporta and Brock Wright see more limited action because of these joint practices. So James Mitchell is someone else to look out for at the tight end. You got anybody? Uh, I do like the Mitchell call quite a bit there. Um, you know, the two of the Titans that they do have were, were late signs as well. So maybe we see him. And, and Mitchell was a guy who wanted a role last year. They, you know, talked about him as a pass catching guy. just never came to fruition. He battled some injuries last year. So I like that Mitchell call quite a bit. Um, for the games that I really broke down and covered, you had the the more appealing tight end options by far, um, which I guess isn't saying a whole lot. The the one guy that stood out to me playing time wise was Noah Tagai here. A um, lot of injuries on the the Arizona depth chart. Zach Ertz he's still on the pup. Trey McBride has been limited essentially all of training camp. They added Jeff Swaim a couple weeks ago. He's been dealing with injuries as well. Um, practicing in a limited fashion for the majority of the past week or so. He's been held out actually more often than he's been uh, able to play there. Noah Tagai had a couple of practices where he kind of stood out, according to some beat writers. For what that really means, I'm not 100% sure, but he's been running with the tight end, uh, running as a tight end one with that first team unit quite a bit uh, this offseason with all the injuries there. So he's a guy who could 
legitimately play four quarters just because of how limited this uh, this depth chart is here and, and kind of what they're expecting from him in the regular season. And then two other names, uh, kind of going back to the well with some Cleveland guys here. Again, I would love to get some more solidified information on what to expect from some of these guys. But Jordan Akins, he did return to practice, but he's been banged up a ton all of training camp. So I'd be pretty surprised if he plays a ton. David Njoku, again, like all the starters here, is expected to play, but probably not more than any two or three drives. Harrison Bryant has been DNP over the past handful of practices with an undisclosed medical issue that Stefanski said he can't comment on. Um, so not sure what's going on there. Um, if he plays, which I'm assuming he doesn't, he might be able to have a, a decent role here as he's sort of kind of trying to showcase why he should be involved in this offense after he did get a kind of come to a deal with, with Cleveland to stay here. But we saw two guys, Thomas Greeny and Zaire Mitchell Payton, both play 40 plus snaps last week, and they both each had three catches. So again, three catches might not seem like a lot, but from a preseason tight end perspective, that goes a pretty long way, especially in PPR formats. Kyle, right, we got to get out of here. I just want to remind anyone listening to this podcast that we are recording this the day before and that lots of information is going to come out between now and Roster Lock. Be sure to come check us out in our free Discord where we will be chatting it up all night long about the NFL and also on Road Grinders Premium where we'll be making edits to our core plays, making edits to our projections in Lineup HQ. And if you would like to get access to everything we have to offer, I will remind you, if you are a new subscriber, you can get $50 off for a limited time for a price of just $375 for the whole year of NFL action. Kyle, that's going to do it. My name is Chris Gimino. That's Kyle Murray. We'll be back again soon for more preseason action. Best of luck out there in the streets.